for those of you unfamiliar with High Tide, it's not a deck that we get on camera a lot. How does the deck actually win? Well, the deck actually wins by eventually brain freezing your opponent or blue sun zenithing your opponent. Really, the idea is you just make absurd amounts of mana. You cast a card Time Spiral to redraw your entire hand. There's a bunch of these cards with these mechanics. So Time Spiral costs six and untaps six lands. After you have something like a, like a high tide resolving, those cards actually start producing mana. Yeah. So you get to the point where all your cards produce mana and you just keep producing more until you have enough to make your opponent draw 60 or mill their whole deck. So, you know, not a bad start for Lee. He got he has a turn one thought sees, which again is probably a card that he really values in this particular matchup. Um, yeah. sees a hand of Fluster Storm, double merchant scroll, ponder, and a high tide along with two lands. Yeah, so this is one of the reasons why High Tide is pretty hard to play a Thought Seize deck against. Um, High Tide actually plays basically 16 cantrips if you count Merchant Scrolls cantrip, which it more or less is. Uh, what Feline's trying to assemble is a hand of four lands, four plus lands, uh, at least one, only one High Tide really in this matchup, and then a Time Spiral. Every other slot eventually is going to turn into a counter spell. And how consistently would you say the deck kind of goes off on turn four? Is, well, that, is turn four basically the turn, you think, for this deck? Or? Turn four is the deck that is the, t the turn where combo starts becoming live. You can go for it on turn three, um, but turn four is really when you want to start comboing with the deck. Uh, you actually, what you, if this is the old school kind of combo deck where while you can go off on turn four, you actually want to go off on the last possible turn every time. Got it. So if they give you till turn six, take turn six. So interesting here, um, Feline had a Ponder and a Preordain in hand and chose not to cast either on turn one. Why is that? Well, she doesn't actually know what she's looking for yet. She wants to make sure she hits land drops. Um, you can afford to be pretty greedy with your cantrips here. You know, you don't have an uncracked fetch land. Um, she doesn't know what, like think about your deck as High tides, spirals, and wild cards. And mm -hmm. it's like, you don't necessarily want to turn your wild card into something yet if you don't have to. Got it. So Lee misses a land drop, uh, but he does have a death right shaman, so he will be able to generate two mana next turn if it stays in play. Feline looks like we're going to see a, another, it looks like a ponder. So yeah, so ponder reveals time spiral, force will, and another island. So going to keep all those cards and draw an island, I think, for the turn. Yeah. We see a lot of thoughts he's action in Lee's hand. One thing, though, Feline is fine getting Thoughtseize tears. We've seen another Thoughtseize coming out from Lee. Yeah, I see what you're saying. There's a lot of cantrips in the deck. Um, so I, it looks like it doesn't care that much. And, and a card like Time Spiral is huge. It's basically a one card that can just refill your hand. Yeah. So it looks like uh, Lee is going to cast Thoughtseize. And we're, again, we're going to see pretty much the same hand, except plus a Force of Will. Uh, minus the high tide, so. Yeah, so we have two Merchant Scrolls. Those are still wild cards. There's a Fluster Storm and a Force of Will. So what Feline's doing is she's she's building up toward that toward that counter spell fight that she's anticipating. Um, and Fluster Storm obviously huge there. Yeah, well, eventually all you have to do is get to you know, six, like I said, it's just it's only one one high tide that she needs and one time spiral. And even sometimes like a high tide and a meditate will be enough. You just want a card drawer and a lot of mana. Yeah, and uh, the the cool thing here is that Lee isn't able to really develop his board that much, so. Um, not really able to, because he's stuck on mana, he's not really able to develop his board that much. So um, he has a Jace in his hand. Looks like he also has a Vindicate, the one of Vindicate. So this is the first aggressive play from Feline. She cast a Merchant Scroll, getting a High Tide. Uh, that's the first wild card, so to speak, that she's cashed in here. You know, she, We already know that she had drawn that Time Spiral. So now that she's found the High Tide, she has the two pieces she needs. She's only going to set up for more lands. And now that she has a, spi a Spiral, uh, a Tide, a Force of Will, a Fluster Storm, and lands. She's sitting right where she wants to be. So here's a second land for Lee. Uh, likely to see maybe a Stoneforge here or a Vindicate on the land. Maybe he thinks he needs to kind of keep... Nope, he's going to lead with Stoneforge here. You're, you're absolutely right on Vindicate on a land being a really strong play here. Uh, High Tide needs lands in play. If blowing up a land is actually time walking the deck, and in Lee's situation, it, it's a pretty... It's a pretty good play here, actually. Yeah. And the thing is, I haven't played this matchup at all, but I would have to imagine Stoneforge Mystic probably isn't relevant, or at least as relevant as Vindicating Land. Obviously, Vindicating Land isn't going to win me the game, but I can't imagine casting Stoneforge here is really going to be that You need relevant. some win con as a Death Blade player. Like I said, if you give High Tide till turn 7, they'll probably kill you every time. So you need to make sure that they can't get to turn 7. But, but I think, I, you're I think I'd rather right. Vindicate the Land and, and then play a Jace next turn, hopefully. That at is least it gives me something That is do. certainly a stronger play. Yeah. So looks like uh, Feline's going to cast Merchant Scroll and search for a Cunning Wish here. Yeah, so Merchant Scroll for Cunning Wish uh, is a pretty good play here. What that allows her to do is Cunning Wish is kind of another one of the wild cards in the deck. High Tide operates out of a Wish board. So what she can do is she can use that Cunning Wish to Cunning Wish for Intuition and then use Intuition as a tutor for any other card she may need in the deck. That's another insurance policy against discard spells. Um, and I, and I not, don't know not only her exact hand, I'm not sure what, she, what it is she's still looking for. But the fact that she hit her land drops, at this point, she probably is fine. Five land is about enough here. 
Yeah, so she's got the high tide. You said she's got the time spiral as well. Uh, but it looks like she's not going to go for it just yet. Yeah, and that's the thing. She could have gone for it in that situation. Um, and that certainly wouldn't have been bad. But what she is doing is she's just waiting. It's one of the, it's the last possible turn combo decks. Uh, there wasn't a sort of fire nice off the stone forge. It wasn't the batter skull he showed her. Because that represents card draw, that might be what it takes to, you know, kind of force her hand in saying next turn is going to be the combo. And turn. do you see uh, Cunning Wish getting cast at the end of the turn? Well, Cunning Wish, it depends. It depends what happens here. I don't, I don't know if she's actually missing anything. I believe she has the spiral and the high tide. So if she does cast it, it'll probably be for a pact of negation out of her board. Got it. So uh, Death Watch Chairman actually takes a uh, high tide, which is actually important because now it can't get shuffled back in because of the time spiral. Exactly. Uh, tides will be shuffled back in, in when... So each one that they can remove from the deck is really good. That said, because she's going for a resilient combo instead of a fast combo, she really only needs one high tide. Mm -hmm. She's got a Cunning Wish on end step here. There is one Force of Will in wow, the yeah, deck. Wow, so yeah, it looks, looks like Lee just draw the Force of Will this turn. Yeah. But that's the thing, high tide is, because it's a deck with all islands, it has more counter magic. Like, you know, so if you give it until turn seven, it'll have, very consistently, it'll have a high tide, it'll have a spiral, and it'll have about four counter spells in its hand. Yeah, so um, I think uh, Feline really wants Lee to try to force this because uh, she does have the Fluster Storm, so this would be actually perfect for her. Yeah, well, it doesn't really matter either way. She can let this get countered. If all she was going to get was a Pact of Negation with it, then it's fine that he counters this. You know, Pact of Negation, either the, either the Cunning Wish eats a Force Will or the Pact that she gets eats a Force but of she Will. But she can get the high tide with the, for the Cunning Wish now, right? Uh, the high tide actually is a separate exile zone, so that doesn't oh. work anymore. So that, that one's in the you can't get an exile zone. Oh, that's it, unfortunate. Yeah, it used to be able to <laughs> that you could rescue your, yeah. you know, your the cards of an exile, but that yeah, that for example, you cannot cunning wish for cunning wish to build storm anymore. That that wish you just cast, that's gone. So uh, yeah, Lee is left with just the vindicate stoneforge mystic and the batter skull. Uh, but if the stoneforge mystic does connect, he will get another card draw. Yeah, she went and got an intuition, so she may be missing a piece. I don't know if she actually took that spiral the first time around. So intuition would suggest that she's still missing something. We see this the high tide in her hand. And yeah, an extra card draw there. Feely just found a true name nemesis. It doesn't, doesn't find too much help. Yeah, so you can kind of see why you would think the high, high, high tide player's favorite game one. There are so many bad cards in Lee's hand. This particular <laughs> okay, match. Batter skull, true name. Yeah. There is one thing, the last thing she needs to watch out for is, you notice that all of Lee's lands are islands. Okay, high tide affects all islands in play. So on a turn when, if she has to cast Time Spiral, there's a chance, first of all, she'll give Lee a lot of mana. And mm -hmm. if all his mana is untapped, there's a chance she'll draw him into Force of Wills again, that he can start hard casting at her post Time Spiral. So there is some incentive for her to either try to turn about him or maybe go off when some of his lands are tapped. Yeah, so right now Lee only has one island untapped. So um, not a huge concern for her at this point, but yeah, I understand. I'm with you. Yeah, the fact that high tide affects all islands is definitely something she has to be concerned with. Yeah, she can start, if she has counter spells, which she does, she can start on high tide here. She has six lands. She can use, that'll be 10 mana, which is enough to intuition, four times spiral, and spiral to go ahead and start the interaction. She, depending on what spell she has left over, she may even have some mana to cast some offensive counter spell. Yeah, and do you think her concern is that if Lee fought over the Cunning Wish, then maybe he actually has a second Force of Will? Well, you have to decide how much she can fight over. It's, it, it's pretty nice to be able to combo with your opponent tapped on lands. Wow. And giving so. him another draw certainly doesn't seem very enticing. Because that, you know, the sword will draw two cards. She's going to give him one more turn, however. She's going to give him one more turn, and he's going to draw two cards now. So that's a really huge one. Even a Thoughtseize could be pretty important here. A Thoughtseize would be good. She has some redundancy. Um, I think I maybe have liked going for the combo on the tap out there, if she does have it. What this will give her is a lot more mana. Uh, one of the ways she can certainly navigate on the, her combo turn, like having spiraling with extra floating mana is really valuable. So uh, thankfully for Feline, Lee just drew another true name nemesis. So uh, not too impressive of a draw here for Lee. I think he could still kind of smell that he probably needed to draw something impactful. Lee, Feline is not going to give him another turn at this point. Yeah, he can vindicate a land here. I actually think the right play for him is to keep all his islands untapped instead of vindicating a land. Oh, yeah, so he can generate the mana in case uh, he draws. Because, again, right. he's going to get to draw seven cards if uh, the time spiral gets cast. And as a, as a kind of a, a veteran high tide player, Feline is going to try to minimize the number of high tides she casts because of how much it helps Lee. Yeah. But now that he's tapped out for it, we may not see that. He's going to go for a vindicate on one of her lands. It's inconvenient for her, for, to be sure, but six is a pretty big number. A high tide player should be is comfortable comboing on four lands. Well, plus she can actually cast Intuition at the end of Lee's turn now, so um, she's not going to have to use three mana on her turn as she would have last turn. So she still ha should have more mana than she would have had available last turn. Yep, so Intuition, this is going to be used as a tutor. You see, for time spiral, time spiral, time spiral. Always giving your opponent options with Intuition. So time spiral is to the hand, and Vindicate should resolve here dealing with the island. Yeah. Her ideal draw this turn actually could be another land. She's going to brainstorm on end step here. You see, she found another Force of Will. And this is the power of high tide. She's got the spiral. She's got the tide. She's got a Force of Will. Um, just going to continue having lots of really strong blue cards, like offensive counter spells. She said she found another spiral. That certainly isn't any help. Yeah, so it looks like basically next turn, you imagine she's going to go high tide, time spiral with Force of Will back up. And then that's when the party begins. Yeah, that's what I mean. The fact that Lee has tapped three of his islands is great for her. It means she can actually start casting a bunch of time. She can cast additional high tides if she finds them, and any force of wills that Lee draws will not be very effective here. 
So still debating what she wants to put on top of her library. I think she wants to know whether or not she can afford to go off with less than uh, just five mana. Because, yeah, it looks like she's going to get rid of the Flooded Strand. So that's going to be the second to bottom card there, the second to top card. Yeah, she actually likes her draw for the turn. She's going to go ahead and redraw that. And now th this is the turn. She's at four. She can't take another hit. Death Rite's going to put her to two right now. Yeah, so she actually, <laughs> yeah, she actually can't. Yeah, that's, can't that's, crack flooded stream. Yeah, that's important. She can't uh, crack flooded stream because she, if she wants force of will as a backup. Right. And that is a little bit of an unfortunate. That is unfortunate for her. There's no life gain in her deck. So she's actually more or less doing a four land combo here. Yeah. So you see that dive, which she has, she's placed feelings, keeping track of how much mana islands are currently tapping for. So the number of islands tapped for two. One high tide has resolved. Yeah, so not going off last turn basically cost her four mana. Yeah, it's going to cost her four mana. Like I said, four lands is easy enough to go off of, to go off using. And I think that's just what we'll see her do. She has a Spiral, a Force of Will, two other cards. If she had extra mana, she could afford to start going through some cantrips to try to get some additional value here. Like I said, there's the worry if she cracks that Flooded She's debating between what's more important, Force of Will or Flooded Strand. Yeah, because basically if she cracks the Flooded Strand, she really can't afford to ca use any of the Force of Wills that she draws off. The so if Lee draws a Force of Will, she can't force back. Yeah, if she had a second high tide, this decision would be easy. She'd go ahead and just go and go down to three. She does not, though, so it's going to be Time Spiral, it looks like. Force of Will, Time Spiral. All right, that's going to be cast. And Lee gives the thumbs up, it looks like, so it should resolve. Yeah, she's made this combo turn a little more difficult for herself than it needed to be. Granted, that because of that, I think she felt far enough ahead that she was, like, she's still in a tight situation, and she was she was playing around a lot of things that Lee didn't have. You know, she was playing as though he had a Fist of Counter Magic. Yeah. Which I think is really the correct way to play Time Spiral. It's, it's a combo deck for people who like safe combos. Yeah, you don't want to expose yourself too much. I mean, and, and oops, all spells, those are decks where people just don't care what your opponent's doing. Yeah, you're like, well, I hope you don't have it. No, no, Tide Tide's like, well, I hope you have everything, and I'll just, I'll just slowly answer them all. Yeah, High Tide Show and Tell, they both kind of seem like a little more resilient, robust combo decks that, you know, maybe, maybe they give up a little speed, but they're not nearly as exposed to just a singular force of will or a ley line of sanctity like we saw in prior matches with right. uh, Storm. So because she's a little limited on mana, this is not 100% a win here. It's certainly a strong. Both players are going to redraw seven cards. And there's one island for her, so that's going to be helpful. We see a lot of mana from Feline, two high tides and a, and a candlestick. Look at that seven cards from Lee. Woo. Bunch of <laughs> multiple swords to plowshares, death by shamans, and land. All right, so he's got nothing. He's he's F6, you could say. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it looks like uh, Feline played a land for the turn. This yep. She tapped that one for two. It's going to be the first one is for a high tide. The second one is for a candlestick. And Lee's had enough. Wow. And that is that is I'll say that's premature on Lee's part. Well, I think uh, um, the viewers at home thank Lee for not having 